what's the protocol here? Do I push him into coming or do I sit back and let it be? Uh, in general, what's your thoughts on how to handle your best buddy showing up to big events as we get older? I'm crazy busy, but I always plan my year out and it's sure you plan your year out. There's a disconnect right there. <laughs> yeah. You plan your year out. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. Life advice, life advice, rr at gmail.com. No statements to be made today. I don't believe. I don't think we have any statements to, to issue. Uh, Post pod pressers. I don't think anything happened. Uh, on, yeah, on Tuesday, so I think we're good. Level of interest of Sarudi and Kyle doing a post Rosillo show podcast wrap up. That would be. Would you get any downloads on that one? You think probably limited. I think it'd be sort of like the clay thing. I think you know you hope for two of six, two of seven games to go well, <laughs> but it could be really bad. Yeah, that one game though could be sick. Just shoot ourselves into a hot streak. I don't know. That's <laughs> the editing. Yeah. Maybe it'll work. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, we we're guilty of it a little bit every now and then. Here, uh, our Tyson Fury post game was 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 long. Uh, Warranted though that one. Mm. <laughs> but I um, <laughs> I think it's kind of funny when when content plays like I would never tell a show, hey, don't do that. But that's an incredible like, hey, we needed a, we needed to recap what happened on the show. And it's like, well, you, it's just a podcast. Like, I don't. And then Steve goes to Kyle. He's like, you know, I didn't really get his third analogy. That whole thing. He's like, <laughs> it's a little know. smell in your own fart sort of deal. Yeah. yeah. He's like, who's Al Thornton again? Why? Why did he say he was right about Al Thornton? Let me look this up. All right, let's just stop talking and get to it. This one, I think, applies to a lot of a lot of people out there. A lot. Of, this is a uh, high dude involvement. Uh, situation okay uh chris is chiming in here i I think we're okay avid listener married 35 two young daughters clocking in at 5 10 and a half by lie and say six feet put it on my license hey that's yeah everybody gets it man here's my dilemma i've been in a fantasy football league with my buddy since high school celebrating our 25th anniversary this coming season 20 years in this league boys so that's from well, I don't know, 15 on. That's, that's how that math works on my end. You guys can double check that. Each year we do our draft in person. And it be, uh, it's become a date we all mark on our calendars because it's such a damn good time. As I get older, I appreciate it even more because I'm able to feel like a goofy kid again. Hey, man, I get it. Uh, this year we're all headed down to the Jersey Shore to our buddy's beach house uh, for the weekend to host a draft, a little barbecue, play some old school wiffle ball. This is, uh, can I go? Love the Jersey this Shore. Is, yeah, seriously. I, I've never hung out at the Jersey Shore <laughs> oh, ever. man. Great time. Kyle? Great time. You, you got a quick 60 on uh, the Jersey Shore no, for us? In my youth, just had a great time. Haven't been back since I was an adult. I'm really, uh, really excited to go one of these summers. All right. Sounds like that's on the to-do list. So uh, the emailer writes in, we've been talking about this weekend for almost four years now, and we all agreed on a date in August, way back mid-season last year, winter of 2021. So we're talking, you know, these guys are almost 12 months out. My best friend, league commissioner, is one of the two guys living out of state. Uh, he's in Nevada. We try to call each other uh, every couple of weeks. In our last call, he casually drops in that he's going to try to make the draft, but his recent promotion at work is making it difficult. I immediately called him out on his bullshit, citing we all agreed to this date last year, and we've been talking about the 20th anniversary draft for years now, and we barely get to see each other in general. To his credit, he did just get promoted. He's also uh, He also just got married. Ah, come on. We know where this is going. <laughs> um, they were both impacted significantly from COVID. Uh, based on their line of work. To be clear, though, the plane fare is not the deciding factor. I get all of that, but also, but I'm also juggling two young daughters, building a business, all while getting uh, a degree. So he's going to grad school here, business uh, degree. I'm also the reigning league champ, so I'm planning on touting the championship bell all weekend long. <laughs> Truth mm-hmm. comes out. Yeah. What's the protocol here? Do I push him into coming, or do I sit back and let it be? Uh, in general, what's your thoughts on how to handle your best buddy showing up to big events as we get older? I'm crazy busy, but I always plan my year out and it's sure you plan your year out. There's a disconnect right there. <laughs> yeah. You plan your year out. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> Pretty sure you're getting in the water though. <laughs> Probably going to be in the water though. Uh, all right, look, man, um, I totally get where your head's coming at from this one, but here's, here's the deal. You should be pumped that this has gone on this long. Because as you get older, this is what happens. This isn't some 
Like, I can't believe it's gone on this long. I can't believe your crew. Like, we have our crew, right? And we used to get together every year. And then we stop because guys get older. And some guys that'll have kids will have wives that are like, absolutely not. It happens. Sometimes, believe it or not, folks, the guy doesn't want to go. The guy's like, I don't want to fucking go and act like an idiot all weekend and be hung over until Wednesday. Uh, and they don't want to do that. All right. Sometimes people love their family so much. They don't want to be away from them for an entire weekend. So that's another thing. We in our group have given up on all the Boston guys. The Boston guys won't go anywhere. They'll barely cross the fucking street. So whenever the rest of the country is trying to figure out a plan, which we haven't been able to pull off in years, guys have just omitted the Boston guys from even being included. We have another guy who won't go anywhere unless it's a direct flight. If it's a connection, he's out. If we pick a place, he's like, there's no direct flights from where I'm at. That's I'm not going. I think it is insane too. And he listens to <laughs> the podcast. So, so yes, I think it's insane that you'll never go do something awesome just because there's a connection. I don't know what happened to him one time in a connection. He hates him a lot. He just refuses to go through right. Chicago. He just can't do it. <laughs> there's also, as your friends, as you, everybody gets older, you're going to be, you're going to be friends with a couple, like it's going to be your buddy and a wife. They're going to have two kids, right? And everything revolves around the kids. They're going to stop living in a way. Then there's going to be another buddy that gets married and they have a few kids and nothing changes with them. They're still doing whatever. And they just also have kids. And so everybody handles their own situation a little bit differently. But I would tell you, like, get used to this. Yes, you could give them a hard time. Um, but planning it out this far in advance, you're a planner. Non-planners, you know how like planners can't handle non-planners? I think non-planners hate planners even more. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, like when somebody goes, hey, are you good for that spring charity thing? I'm like, what the fuck? Are you, do you know who you're talking to? I'm like, maybe. I actually blew one off last month and I had said yes to it and then I didn't even know. And then by the time it came around, I was like, are you still good to go for this next week? And I was like, oh my God. I was like, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> like, I, I can't even believe I said yet. Not because I'm so cool. It's just because work for me, fortunately, unfortunately, always comes first. Uh, there's also another little thing you threw in here. Who gives a shit if you're the champ or not? Yeah, that's... But I know that's you give nothing. a shit, but was... was are you more upset that he's not showing up while you have the belt? Like if you would come in fourth, would you be more okay with him not coming? It's probably packaged in there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Just, we love that you listen to the pot. Is there any chance that maybe you're a little annoying? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. But Five stars. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, we got to cover all the bases here. We got to make sure we, we attack every question and email from all sides. So, uh, I love that you care this much. I love that you want to keep it going for another 10, 20 years. I get it. You get so few of those weekends with your buddies. For me, if I had like a Thursday where I'm like, what are we doing tomorrow night? Do you know how many years it's been since I've had a just casual neighborhood? Like, Hey, what's the plan tomorrow night? It didn't happen. It doesn't happen. It wasn't happening in Connecticut. So then to be like, hey, we've got all of the core guys together for I understand your right to want everyone to keep having to do this. But what you have to accept at some point is there's definitely going to be a guy in that group and usually more than one that says, I don't want to do this stuff anymore or they can't. Or in this case, the guy just got married. So maybe it's the wife. He just got promoted. Maybe it's the job. You mentioned, as you explained, I'm not going to share it all, what they do professionally, like they're back at it right now. And so that might just not work out. And it usually doesn't. It's great when everybody's still committed to it. It's great when you're able to pull it off. But I don't think you can be upset. You can maybe ask one time, hey, can you make this happen? If he says no, you're men, you're grown adults here. Like, what are you going to do? Talk, trick him into it? He's not going to do it. I kind of feel bad about the annoying part. I just think that I wondered why that was relevant to this, so I felt like it had to be addressed. No, I think you're right. I've got I've got one guy <clears throat> in my in my group of guys. I got there's a New York City core, there's Poughkeepsie core, and they all every, once a summer they all kind of come up and we th we throw a party and we always make it work. Sometimes we go down to New York City and like a lot of people come. One guy moved down to Florida like five years ago and just didn't come up. The first time he took a bus because he was he's, he's a little cheap, but he could he could make the money. He could he could set it aside if he wants. He took a bus from uh 
like Tampa to, to, to Poughkeepsie, New York. I mean, just crazy to try to save a couple bucks. And I think he spent like almost a, a, an entire day on a bus. But um, but then he just didn't. He just wouldn't. And it used I used to get angry because it was like literally everybody else could make this. I think one time I and I and I wouldn't get angry to him. I think one time I called him after a few brews and just was like laid into him a little bit. But we were okay. I was just like, man, what the fuck's going on here? Am I gonna, I'm gonna wait till I'm gonna see you five years from now? I have to I have to fly to Tampa. You're the only one down there. So anyway, um, he so it's it's kind of it's known that he doesn't come anymore. We give him a little bit of shit in the group text, but here's the thing: this is what group texts are great for. Like this is another way to stay in in touch. I think once you just realize that this is going to be the guy that stays in Tampa, what can you do about it? So I think I think you could continue to be annoying, or you can just razz him a little bit in the group text, which you know that's kind of what they're for anyway. But a slight razzing, a slight yeah. razzing, exactly. Yeah. And I think I think that the, the sooner you uh, admit that and can make it some sort of a an inside joke with you guys, the less like bitter you're going to be every time you make that joke because I think you're pretty upset about it right now. And this is the first time it's happened, so I can see why that's upsetting too. But life goes on. Just um, stay in touch in the group text because we can't all be everywhere uh, at the same time. So what can you do? Yeah, I think you nailed it. Like the first time sucks and you're like a really deeply offended by it. And then it just becomes like, oh, that's the guy that doesn't really show up on the trips and you get older and the trips become less frequent. Like we had um, like we have been trying for my buddies like all throughout our 20s or whatever. And I'm in my early 30s now, but uh, to like tr plan a vacation with everybody. And the only time we'd ever get together was for bachelor parties. And that was it. And like so it was like, all right, you have to go to the bachelor parties, but you don't have to go on the vacation trips if you don't want to. Um and if one of our buddies didn't show up, like that would be a problem. Like we'd be like, what the hell is going on? I get that you think this is like a bath. This is like kind of like a bachelor party thing where it's like everybody's getting together. We got a beach house. Like we don't do this very often, figure it out. But as you get older, some guys are just not into that. They're not going to do it. They're not going to put in the effort. Um, the bachelor party I was just at, actually, one of the main guys didn't show up because his wife wouldn't let him because they had just like his kid had like a recital or something. I think she was like four, not even four, maybe three or four. And Recitals are like, a big deal. Dudes yeah. were like, hey, like she's she's four. Like it, she's not going to remember this recital that she, that you're that he didn't show <laughs> up to. But it's a big deal. Like so you don't I'm, I'll, I'm, I say that because you shouldn't like prioritize what's important in somebody else's life. Like I know it sucks for right. you, but like this guy might be going through some stuff at work. Like you have to respect that. And, you know, you don't know what the circumstance is. Um. And, you know, I don't, the marriage thing, like, you know, I don't think early on you should be saying yes, your, your wife should be saying yes or no to things that you do in your social life right after marriage. Like when kid, when you have kids, it's probably a different story. But I, I'll just say that to say that you don't know like what pressing issues or things he has going on in his work life and his personal life. So like you could rouse him a little bit and like mess around with him in the group chat. I wouldn't give him too much shit. I think it's fun. Like a little lighthearted stuff is fun. But like this, this shit just happens. And at some point, like one guy is going to start backing out and he's going to be the guy that backs out and then it's not going to be as offensive to you anymore. But the first time always kind of hurts the most. How many wives do you think take the rap for guys who just don't want to do stuff? All well, the some time. guys do it on purpose. Oh, yeah. yeah that's what I mean. Yeah. Exactly. Like, They're just like, oh, Christina, you know how she is. She Maybe she's never said no to anything and she, everyone thinks that she's just... I think it happens <laughs> all the time. All the time. Like people mm -hmm. underestimate mm -hmm. how many dudes are out there going, I actually don't want to do anything. And they just have this baked in excuse. It's like the yeah. it's the new yeah. the new mom won't let me or something. Or like uh, in high yeah. school, it's always like I gotta go home and eat first. And I was like, okay, we're not gonna see you again. You don't have to go home and eat first. Yeah, Why I are you doing even... at three thirty? You gotta eat. <laughs> like, first? Babe, we got something. Yeah. Weekend, what are you right? talking about, guy? Yeah. <laughs> I think I remember it even happening once where we like then met up with whoever and we were kind of giving the wife shit. And she was like, "What are you talking about? I tell him to go visit you guys all the time. <laughs> I tell him to get the hell out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So walk around the house like, like Larry oh. David all the time. I've been begging him to go move, go somewhere. Yeah. Sarudi does bring up a good point, though. Shitting on four-year-old recitals never seems to be a good tactic. Yeah. So let's let's refrain from that. Uh, and it's just the way it is. Like every single relationship, whether it's male, female, or or dudes, or the girls' trip crew, there's going to be people in the group where the relationship means more to them than it means to the other person. Like there's just no. This is it's never 50 50 like I'm a big visitor. I like to visit my friends. I also don't have my own family. If I had my own family, I would do it less. I would care less about it. <laughs> but it's interesting that when I do keep in touch with friends from school, because I think like if you're in my friend group, I'm a pretty loyal friend. I look forward to seeing your kids like I look forward. And again, I'm probably in some fucked up, deep seated thing in my own head, replacing my void with like, hey, I want to go play with the kids because uh, I do like kids. But I'll talk to them and they'll say something about another friend being like, hey, I've been here this long and so and so has never even seen my kids or this guy's yeah. never made the effort and I've gone. So it can get a little weird, but it's also this is not insightful. This is just the way the world. I have one friend. 
I forgot about this. I have one friend who there was another friend from the group. This is a different group, right? I've got different pockets of, of core groups. Oh, congrats. Uh, yeah, no, I've got like five or six cores, but they just, they orbit. Got like five or six friends, dude. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know four people, I think. Uh, and the dude hadn't visited them in forever. And the great thing is both guys are big time, like alpha guys. And they're, they're, uh, they're, you know, they were kind of like center of attention guys. Right. And they, they had a lot to back it up. They're both huge dudes. And one guy goes to visit the other guy the first time in forever. And within five minutes, he's pitching him on a cult. <laughs> the guy, Whoa. the other guy is like, Hey motherfucker, you don't even know my kids' names. Get the fuck out of here. It's a recruiting trip for you, pal. What the fuck? Yeah. No, seriously. Like he was like, hey, I'd love to catch up, love to catch up. I haven't seen the kids or whatever. And they were kind of like, oh wow, that's great. This is awesome. Like somebody wants to, he, he's he's maybe making some amends for being out of pocket and never being around and whatever the hell else was going on. And then he shows up and he just starts in on this pitch because he also pitched a different buddy of mine who almost was like ready to bite. He's like, Have you heard about this thing? I'm like, Yeah, it's not really new day. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I'm not uh Interesting thoughts, but I'm just not I'm not really quite ready to throw my clothes out, write you guys a check, <laughs> hang out in the woods for a month. All right. Uh, no offense to any of the cults listening. No, yeah. Well, the, the, really quickly, too, There's, I think you guys would agree with me. There's two camps kind of when you get older. There's the guys who get really comfortable with their life and don't really want to do anything else anymore. And then there's the guy that wants to get away from his life and wants to do every single trip. Right. So there's the guy that's like, I just got to get away from my kids and my wife. And he's like the one that gets after him on a weekend away with the dudes. And there's the guy that you have to basically drag out of his place to get him to hang out with your friends. I think like as you get older, you kind of become, I'm not saying like completely one of those two camps, but you kind of lean one way or the other in those two camps. And it sounds like you're in the camp where like, I want to get after it. And this guy's in the camp of like, I kind of want to hang out at home. Yeah. And that, look, I'll also throw this out there too. Like, Saruti touched that you never know the full scope like maybe it's just as simple as the guy doesn't want to be able to make it and it could be that all right uh we talked about the wife girlfriend element of it where they're getting blamed a lot of times the guy doesn't want to go but you, there can always be other stuff going on with the dude like i remember one guy for a little while we're like what the fuck why won't he hang out with us anymore and then it came out that he was like i actually quit drinking and i just couldn't we're like oh shit and you know and then you're like well you should have told it but it's like well that's his thing he doesn't want to he's going to tell us what he needs to tell us and he'll share it when he feels comfortable in sharing it. And to get to that point of of not wanting to be around your friends, like who are who's anyone? Like you feel so bad about it after the fact because you didn't know because somebody told you. But like that's his, you know, not to sound what it, weird here, but like that's his own journey of of figuring out what he wants to do. And so that'll look that'll probably happen um, to other people that are listening to this at some point too. 